Welcome to short highlights of the 84th edition of Jant Wevelkem in Flanders Field with me, Jez Cox. Very light wins for the start of today's race as the riders lined up with Wout van Aert as the big, big favourite, having won the uh, E3 on Friday. Everyone expected and watched the boys in black and yellow. They've had such an incredible start to this year. Pressure on the shoulders of the Belgian road race champion. The course for the 84th edition of Gent Wevelgem heading back out to the coast towards uh, the North Sea and coming back along De Muren. The expected high winds not there as they were one year ago. So the race unlikely to be smashed apart. The big hills, the cobbled sectors, including of course those three ascents of the Camelberg coming much later on in the race. From about 15k in, we had a seven-man breakaway, including Nikias Arndt, Jelle Wallace, Ludovic Robit, Alexander Konishev, Lars Sorgstad, Lindsay de Wilde, and Johan Jacobs. Behind, the peloton quite happy to let them do that. The teams of Alpes and Phoenix and uh, Quickstep Alpha Vinyl really doing the lion's share of the gentle pressure at the front. Of course, as you'd expect along the way, on the, the uh, dust-covered concrete roads either side of De Muren, a few crashes, one or two, Thankfully, most of the news reaching us, the riders involved in them were up and OK. But uh, the crashes, of course, caused splits in our main peloton and an awful lot of effort being used with just 100k left to chase back on before we went into the ascents of the Kemmelberg and the Plug streets, which really characterise Ghent Wevelgem these days. These plough streets, the farm tracks that take in the middle sector before those two ascents, in between those two ascents of the Kemmelberg. First time up, it was Kasper Askreen looking to try and turn around his fortunes this season for Quick Step Alpha Vinyl. And already at this stage, he and his team under some pretty extreme pressure in the sunshine. The little splits that were being caused were distancing some of the big favourites in this race too. And the breakaway was getting closer to being reeled back in as we went into those plug streets. Jumbo Visma trying to control things at the front end as well. Ludovic Rabi was really unfortunate to puncture out of that breakaway as well. And Johan Jacobs of uh, Movistar using the opportunity to attack and try and go clear. Eventually, our breakaway was absorbed by a very select leading group. Some of them managed to hang on. And in doing so, would play their part late on in this race as well. The last time onto the Kemmelberg, an opportunity for Wout van Aert to try and test people. He sat on the wheel of Kasper Askreen, waited. You can see the Belgian champion just on the wheel of Askreen here, waiting his opportunity to kick, and it was coming. The descent back down through the woods, an opportunity to regroup. And all the time, Group Armour FDG, they're in very good numbers. The French team having a great day out in Fred Wevelgem. This was the moment that Wout van Aert chose to use the steeper side of the Kemmelberg, the Ossuer, as an opportunity to try and distance himself. Christophe Laporte, his teammate, looking across, as you can see, not easing off, but actually trying to get onto Wout van Aert's wheel, taking with him Mads Pedersen, Jasper Sturven, also right there. And Wout van Aert exiting that steeper side of the Kemmelberg with a slight advantage that would gradually be closed up to form a very select leading group. This is the moment at which fans thought they might be watching Wout van Aert riding away from that leading group. But it wasn't to be quite like that. Matej Mohoric using, if anything, his descending skills once again to come off the back of the Kemmel Kemmelberg and work his way up to it. Wout van Aert did everything he could to try and thrive things on, but not quite enough cooperation within that group. And once again, things started to reform. The two groups that had split over the top of the climb coming back together. And this was the moment that the final and decisive split would be made. Christophe Laporte, the Frenchman, now riding for the Dutch team, Jumbo Visma. What an incredible start to the year he has had. And that was the moment at which four riders went clear. And I can tell you, they were never to be seen again. Jasper Sturven was the next of those to come through, the Trek Segafredo man in the white jersey there. And on his shoulder, as they went under 3K to go, in the, uh, the yellow and blue, was Biniam Gourmet, the Eritrean rider from Africa in the colours of Antomarche Wanty Gobert. Christophe Laporte in the end as they came into the finish in Wevelgem left on the front and left really you would think to lead things out but he didn't have long to wait because launching from the back was the African rider. The sort of surprise package to be in that leading group but come the sprint there was no surprise about it. 
The first African winner, the Eritrean Biniam Gurme, taking the win in the 84th edition of Ghent Wimbledon. What a massive moment in his career, but also in the evolving history of our sport. As the sport continues on both the men's and women's side to broaden its reach and to spread beyond the heartland of cycling, Biniam Gurme stepping up for a monumental performance and a massive moment in our great sport. Wonderful to see and richly deserved too. What a great start to the season he has had. He's heading back actually to Eritrea to spend time as he's been away for a while, spend time with his wife and family. He will miss the Tour of Flanders next weekend. There's a result confirmed. Well, Gourmet may be missing the Tour of Flanders. Make sure you don't though. It's all gonna be here at the home of cycling. Don't forget, you can check back the whole of this on the GCN app. And you'll want to, because it was quite some race today at Ghent Wevelgum in Flanders Fields. Until the next time, from me, Jez Cox, enjoy the racing. It's going to be quite some week. <laughs>